What's going on guys? I'm Chad. Welcome back to the Dorky and 40 channel. Today we're going to take a look at one of the projects I've been working on here the past, I don't know, two to three weeks. The weather here in Ohio has been completely windy, rainy, so I haven't had a lot of time to do anything except really work on like one project. Eh, I got a couple going on. I've been kind of like working on one and just getting it rock solid before moving on to the next. What we're here to talk about today is the Ichabod Jr. Now the Ichabod frame made by Andy Shen at Shen Drones has been around for a long time. It started out as a seven inch platform. I think Nurk was flying it for a while, Gab 707 as well. But recently it's kind of caught a little bit of fire and coming to the forefront of filming and flying those type of quads not so much freestyle and all of that mostly because of the whole real steady and just the images that we can get out of quads now gab's even worked with brain fpv uh, to make a filming frame overlay for their graphical osd so this part of the hobby is really starting to take off as more and more people are going into to the professional. If you want to see some of his work, check out his channel. His last video he did, Dragonstone, actually was done with the Ichabod Jr. And he's done a lot of stuff with it, probably a lot that we don't even get to see. And even a couple days ago, TBS announced that they're going to start carrying this frame. And also they're going to carry a complete package that will have the motors, flight controllers, everything that he's using on his build. So I'm going to show you exactly what I got going on with my build, talk about some of the pros and cons of like the frame and some issues that I ran into as far as like tuning. So let's hop over to the bench and take a look at the frame first. So here it is sitting on the scale. It weighs 740 grams all up exactly like it is. And this is with a 1250 6S battery, GoPro Hero 7, everything that you need on there, ND filter, the whole nine yards. So let's just take a look at the frame here and what makes it unique. The big thing that stands out right off the bat is the mount has the camera and the GoPro built in together. So you're always at the same angle when you're flying or shooting or whatever you want to call it so it's kind of unique as far as it does that a lot of frames have this kind of setup now and you know it's kind of similar to like what my epic had but the epic and that kind of stuff has like a fixed chair mount and it's kind of part of the frame and everything like that where this is fully adjustable and you don't have to worry about printing out or having multiple degree of mounts because there might be some cases where you literally want either zero tilt or you want negative tilt. I can think of chasing or hovering around some of my friends at the field with their planes and how awesome that would be. So this thing's got some massively thick arms. They're eight millimeter and I think the seven inch or 10 millimeter comes with the 3D parts that you need. The big thing about the arms is that they're milled out underneath so you can use just regular sized motor screws. But I think that might lend to some of the issues that I had originally with the actual tune, but we'll talk about that here in a second. So I am running Emacs Eco 1700 KV motors to 2306 and the Johnny FPV Freestyle five inch props. Flight one stack flashed with Betaflight 4.0 and again properly tuned with uh, the help of uh, Chris Thompson and Kuda Bear on the Betaflight black box group on Facebook. It's got this sandwich kind of plate design here. Back in here I have my VTX and over here, I underneath here I have my crossfire and then I'm just running my antenna out. They do have like prints and stuff like that that Andy has on his website if you want like vertical mounting and that kind of thing. But for some reason when I had my antenna right here running vertically I was getting some crossfire interference noise going into my video. So I probably could have sorted that out if I wanted to but I just decided to move it to the arm here in the horizontal fashion because I really don't have any problems with the ranges and where I fly. 
Got a micro eagle on here and a 50 volt uh, 2200 microfarad cap. And then on the end, back here, it comes with a normal print, but uh, Mike Stevens, I think is his name on uh, the Shen Drones group, um, whipped together this uh, 45 degree mount uh, print, which will allow you to get a little bit of angle on the VTX. Some people do stack the VTX inside here somehow. There is a place right here for the antenna to come out. But as you can see, the way that I have the Flight 1 stack mounted in there, which is like the way that Preston suggests it, no matter what you're running because of the sensitive gyro, there's just not a lot of room. So that's pretty much a build overview of the Ichabod Jr. And now let's take a look at Betaflight and the filters that I have and the PIDs. All right, so I'm not going to lie, when I first uh, flashed this thing immediately and took off, I was expecting to not have as many issues as I did as far as like the thickness and the quality of the carbon and everything. The only reason I can think of uh, that I was having some issues is A, the ICM series gyro in the Flight 1 stack is a little bit more sensitive than the MPU 6000, and also the I showed you where the arms are milled out to like use three or four millimeter, uh, four millimeter uh, motor screws. So they're not the full, you know, thickness of the eight millimeters to like absorb some of that actual vibration. So I don't know. I'm just kind of theorizing on that. But the actual, uh, actually, uh, you know, the first time I armed it, it flew really bad and it was very wobbly and it also wanted to uh, kind of go to the moon a little bit and i'm not blaming that on betaflight 4.0 um it, it was ba it just basically required some additional filtering as you'll see so regular configuration here d shot 1200 7 percent motor aisle motor idle aka 8k of course and in the PID tuning tab, these are the PIDs that I have uh, came up with. And again, I've very verified all this with uh, the experts. They ran me through some stuff. Did uh, probably 15 to 20 uh, test flights and some minor changes at the end uh, for some final tweaks. Uh, you can pretty much see everything is kind of close to stock it's not like super horribly different from stock but when we look at the filter settings this is where things get very interesting so unlike my source one which you know is a, a finely tuned freestyle build for precision and everything like that the filter tuning here is a little bit more aggressive and has to be to cope and get you the best quality video that you can get. Now, once I made some slight adjustments to the filters at the beginning, the video and everything that the Ichabod Jr. was getting was completely smooth. It was just the some weird flight foot, you know, some weird flight feeling and some jitters and stuff that needed to be taken care of. So Chris had recommended me first before I even set these extra low passes to uh, do some experimentation here with uh, the dynamic D-term low pass. And so you can see this is a lot different compared to stock. And actually this is kind of a setup that is being recommended now for people who kind of are not afraid to go away from beta flight defaults and more finely tune their quad. But you definitely want to have a little bit of experience with black box and a noise analysis and before you get into something like that. So I did have to turn on an extra gyro cut off here set at 150 and the D-term is set at 150 and typically these I would all be these I ran these all at biquad and it was just fine. I uh, at 120 I bumped was able to bump these up to 150 and then turn them on to PT1 to get a little bit less latency so I think according to PID toolbox I'm around 6.1 6.2 milliseconds of latency which is over double of what I have on my source one build I believe it's like around three point one maybe 
three and you definitely can tell the difference as far as like prop wash handling and everything like that because it's like instant that's why there's very little prop wash on that vehicle it just is it's a freestyle build it's you can tune it tighter and everything else so this isn't meant to be flown as aggressive and when you do fly it aggressive you do get pr some prop wash and stuff out of it just because with these added filters you have the added latency which means that it just can't correct and mimic the behavior of the pig controller as fast as you would want it to so before we take a look at some final flight footage that I edited together and color graded and all that stuff, you saw a little taste of that at the beginning. I'll show you some raw footage too, uh, so you can get an idea of that, and then we'll it'll quickly transition into the actual edited version. Pros and cons with the Icky Junior, you know, definitely it's it's made for a heavier, nicer, smooth type of flying type of quad. You know, you can fly semi-aggressive with it, but again, if you try to get super aggressive, you are going to bring out some of that those bad tendencies that people don't like because there is a distinction between, you know, a freestyle quad and a filming quad. So this thing is tuned and filtered to fly great and produce great video, perfectly smooth, no jitters or anything like that. Now some of you might say, well, hey, doesn't your Source 1 do that? Yes, it does. Able to change the angle of the GoPro and the flight camera to get like different kind of shots or footage is just icing on the cake. And he's also producing some five inch ducks to actually go around this. So if you wanted to try to fly it closer to soft targets, you could, but you know, this thing is 740 grams, so it's going to hurt when it hits you. Trust me. So thanks for stopping by today, guys. Please continue to subscribe. Amazon links below. PayPal donation if you so desire. Buy me a drink. Buy me a donut. Whatever. I appreciate all the help and all the views and everything else. So enjoy the footage, and we'll talk to you guys later.